Can, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, your, absolutely. Your life experience and your, your connection to the county. I'm born and raised in Delta County. Um, spent pretty much my whole life here. Went to school down in downstate. I ran a business in Delta County on Escanaba's Main Street for 25 years. Uh, my daughter's being educated in this county. I've been on the commission since 2010. Prior to that, I did five years as the assistant mayor of Escanaba. Uh, my passion for the county and my love for the county is really what got me into local politics. And uh, I think Delta County is an outstanding place and has a ton of opportunities. And you've been in local politics for, for quite a while. Well, f almost 14 years as a commissioner, so 19 years, one way or another. Yeah. So, decade plus of experience as a commissioner. Oh, over the time, what have you taken being a commissioner to mean? The, the roles, responsibilities, what, what do you think is most important in the role? I think it's important that people understand that this is a position of service. Now, some people view it as a position of power, and I think they're sorely misguided. This is a position of service. You help people, and that's where the power comes from, is helping people. You empower them. And so uh, I always give out my phone number at, at commission meetings. And I've always, since 2010, I've done it. I still do it. Um, making the county a better place to live for its citizens is the role of the, of the commission. And for somebody to say, they're not from here, they're not from the state, they're thinking about moving here, how, how would you describe it to them? Well, we've got 209 miles of freshwater shoreline. We've got a gorgeous county, with uh, which has been really blessed with nature um we have good uh, ed, good educational there's seven different school districts in delta county they're good school districts i would say take a look around uh, we've got some beautiful municipalities there's a quality of life here and uh we believe in the quality of life here and uh, i if you want to open up a business we'll give you a sweet tax break too <laughs> and is there anything about yes i gotta swap this out Oh, nine. Uh, I was wondering slaves, what happened there. We're slaves to batteries. <laughs> All right, we're back. There we go. Anything about the county you'd like to see, see changed or be different? Of course. Um, well, in 2020, I think politics changed all over the place. My first uh, 12 years of service as a commissioner was very quiet. You never heard of divisiveness or... I, I think I would like to see Americans treating each other as Americans, but Reagan and O'Neill used to do that. They beat the heck out of each other on the house floor, and then they'd go have a beer or a meal. That's because at the end of the day, they were both Americans. I think you're seeing some of the folks from the left and some of the folks from the right are, are getting very personal with it, and you know, I would like to see people try to find a medium ground, but I can't do that when I'm being attacked. And if free elected, what are your priorities for the county moving uh, forward? Do you see any large challenges? Oh, there's the always, a, first of all, I've presided over 13 balanced budgets. That's always a challenge. You run the county like a business. You don't dip into the day-to-day -day expenses with your savings, okay? Any more than you stick it to the taxpayers and, and you know, raise taxes. The county expands its revenue streams through tourism and through manufacturing. So my goal is another balanced budget. My goal is to empower our veteran services officers to make sure that our law enforcement has the funding and the training to, to meet the demands of what's going on up here. And uh, there's always a challenge going on. And so it's uh, making sure that less government is better government, but the government that there is serves the people. And we talked about it a bit at the meeting tonight. But I, I, I do want to touch on all the candidates. Sure. The wording of the recall, you know, it has to do with the firing of administrator uh, Salvo. Uh, in your own words, can you, can you describe why that happened and address her accusations? She sure, sure. I mean, she, she went on an 11-minute spiel. I came to the February 7th meeting with the understanding that item number nine in the agenda would be discussing our employees' contract. Well, that never happened. I got here and there was over 100 people in the room, another commissioner, and I, that's fine, man. Bring as many people as you want. You Call your boss, I'm not sure who you work for. Call him a liar, call him unethical. Say that he's uh, not mitered in reality and that he's forgotten his, his principles. And tell the man or woman how they'll communicate with you. You'll dictate that and see what happens to you. Yeah, I, think um, I would have much rather handle this 
in a discussion way, but we got, she fired herself. And um, the recall is basically, recall language has to be factual and has to be clear. I was elected chairman on the 3rd of January, 2023. By the 25th of January, 2023, my opponent had two letters in the Daily Press saying what a horrible job I was doing. Well, that's a two week learning curve. I mean, or a three week learning curve max. So, you know, Emily had a job waiting for her. I firmly believe that. Uh, she didn't understand the nature of that the county administrator, their job is to affect the will of the board. The board's job is to affect the will of the people. And there cannot be any confusion in that. I've never experienced it before. And you said Saul Yeah, rules for radicals. I mean, they've already admitted. I'm not as familiar with it. Well, that's, uh, you know, Obama operated under that credo. The current group of left wing, I mean, the far left wing of the Democratic Party locally. I used to be a Democrat for 10 years. The Southern Blue Dog. And uh, pro life. And uh, and you know, total right? Second Amendment this guy. Can, and um, so I have some fondness for the party. I'm just looking for one or two conservative yeah, Dems to step on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not finding it. When, yeah. we're, um, yeah. well, when you were a Democrat, what were your your big things? Well, big Second Amendment guy. I was, I was the father of the Second Amendment sanctuary motion. I also wanted to make sure that law enforcement was funded. I would consider myself a Democrat like Kennedy or Truman, but those guys today would be probably so far to the right, it would be ridiculous. I mean, you know, and they were Democrats back then. Um, so I was, um, I, I, I supported and fought for the unions back then. Um, and when I switched, switched parties, uh, because I thought the party had left me, not to quote somebody, uh, that I couldn't even get them to call me back. The, you know, letters to the editor two days after being elected, that was when you were in incumbent, correct? Oh yeah, I was. You know, it was 2023, so I was. I served for 12 years without being chairman. I had no interest in that. Well, I was the senior most commissioner. It just made sense that I'd be chairman, so I got elected January the third, 2023. It was uh, that was after the you know I won and beat my opponent uh, in the 2020 November the 8th, 2022 election, and so. Um, what I was saying is the, the, the learning curve to be chairman, even if you've been on the commission for a while, there's a learning curve there. And so, I mean, in, in three weeks' time, there's two letters to the editor saying what a terrible job this guy's done. Basically, that tells me that she already had an agenda. This was an extension of November the 9th. Well, she did run against you. Yes, she so did. I guess that'd be a fair assessment. Well, I mean, and so, so be it. She ran against me. She was overwhelmingly defeated. Um, you, you take your loss. But, I mean, again, the recall language only has to be factual and clear. So you could recall me because I wore a pink shirt on January the 17th. And uh, this is on party lines. This has everything to do with political agendas and politics. And uh, the divisiveness that she spoke about tonight, uh, she's just as active in it. I mean, if you punch me, I'm gonna, I know I should turn the other cheek, but politics is a full contact thing. And... Uh, you know, I, I have to defend myself politically, obviously. If re-elected, re do you think there's a way to decrease that division, bring people back together? Also, also, do you see that as, as part of your responsibility? I think, yeah, if you're, if you're in public office, you need to extend your hand. Um, because whether you like it or not, you work for everybody. But I already have extended my hand. I've offered to take people out for coffee and talk about them. And my opponent's like, I don't want to have coffee with this guy because blah, blah, blah. I'm willing to accept my role in this. <laughs> She's got to be willing to accept her role in this. So um, there's always a way for peace if people will listen. Uh, but I'm not prepared to throw the county under the bus. Uh, my, my goal here is to make it a better place to live. And it's not Dave Moyle's ego. It never has been. Is there anything else you want to say, say to voters? Because if I was attracted to trouble, if I was a troublemaker, you'd know about it my first 12 years because there would be ample evidence. But my first 12 years were quiet. You can't attack me on my policies because the policies have been solid. They've been good for the county. So they're reduced attacking attacking my, my personage. And my family, and that's you know that's fine. But you've got to bring a pragmatic, realistic policy with you to the table, more than just negativity or the county side.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah.